What's going on guys? Hit pause back for the next part of this tutorial. And in this part what we're going to do is, hopefully you can see it on the screen, uh, we are going to uh, do the pistol and then we'll, this is basically going to start the part where we get it set up to be um, basically, uh, you know, so we can swap it around and stuff. Now I decided against modeling a new one, uh, just, you know, like a simple box one. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with one of my favorite guns of all time, the Colt Python 357 Magnum. Yes, I do have this pistol. Um, so this one's already been, um, you know, obviously modeled, uh, obviously rigged. Uh, it actually actually has been painted. However, it was painted for UDK, so it's specular and gloss, not PBR. So I'll be repainting it at some point. Um, actually, I kind of already did. Um, but let me just go over the rig really quick so you guys can see what I've done. So once again, we have a weapon root, and once again, we have an anim. Because again, the weapon root is solely here to stick it to his hand. The weapon anim is where he goes and does whatever animation he may or may not want to do. Obviously a trigger is there as well and um, in this case we also have uh, is that the hammer and if it is why is it way over oh okay yeah that is the hammer it does in fact it is in fact supposed to rotate from there okay I've also got this uh, release piece here that can be pushed back I also can take this guy and bring it out okay so if I go 90 degrees and that gives me this piece here that I can use to push the bullets out should I want each bullet is actually they're all individually rigged and each bullet has two pieces to it the shell and the slug itself and the reason I did that is so that during reload when he dumps all the shells out I can make it look like they've been spent simply by pushing these inside the mesh like so uh, and if I was really worried about it I could uh, you know shrink it down or something so that's pretty much about it for the controls uh, on the weapon uh, like I said they all are oh and uh, I can take this and spin the um, yeah, undo 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 I believe I also have a master bone right here for nope that's the bullet I did at some point oh yeah it sticks out the side right here so this is the cylinder that way when you shoot the gun we can have this turn like so should we want to do that however I just w wanted to point you know show you guys how I had done the rig um, just, essentially what you want to do is just go in and put a bone for every piece of the gun that's gonna move I mean that it's that simple it really is I even have a speed loader thing here that I've been you know I use during the reload so when it when all the bullets drop off screen they immediately pop into here and he brings this back up into the gun I've already done all these animations for my game I don't really want to spend a lot of time doing it for this one so what I want to do actually is go to our idle animation here well, let's just I don't need to save anything don't save and what I want to do is I want to get the gun now in his hands now it is going to be kind of weird because of the fact that remember we had to turn him to compensate for for their uh, hip here because we can't bring in the idle animation in here cleanly um, to to see what's going on so we faked it I don't know if you remember that hopefully you saw that part uh, so what I want to do is basically take this weapon root and I'm gonna want to move it but the left hand oh actually I thought the left hand would have been stuck now this is idle I didn't do that in that one the left hand is in fact stuck to this bone as you can see I, I picked the right hand his left hand is this piece is what I was concerned about it is in fact not on the slide like the other animation has it set up and it really doesn't matter it's link constrained which doesn't affect the hierarchy okay I, I the difference to me I always call it uh, a soft link and a hard link this is a hard link right here actually affects the hierarchy the animation constraints link constraint uh, causes the object to follow it but it's um, it's a soft link meaning that it's beyond the hierarchy or outside of the hierarchy so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the weapon and go page up here and I'm just going to move it to the side right now and the reason that I'm keeping it is because what it's giving me is actually a um, 
it's giving me an angle here that I can use uh, for lining up the pistol as well. So I'm just going to keep it there as reference. And what we want to do is we want to bring in our pistol. So if you just import, that replaces the scene. But what we can do is actually merge objects from an external 3ds Max scene. So I do have to uh, Max Force uh, UDK. I sorry, I gotta find this. Skirt. And player animations. And where is the cult Python? Cult Python right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this here, and I'm gonna click all, and hit OK. And we're just going to merge. All right, problem. Houston, we have a problem. Uh, it's a pretty good size. I mean, it's a big gun, but yeah, I don't think it's that big. So I'm just going to scale it down uh, right here, and I can scale the roots. Now, I'm, this this actually is something that can get a little messy when you scale stuff. So what I want to do actually is I want to align it to his hand. So that's this bone here. Okay, and we just go boom, 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 and we hit OK. So that's dead center on his hand. So now I can take the anim bone, because remember I don't want to move that bone. Let me do that again. I got all the axes and everything. Yes. Okay. So it just looks like it's pointing backwards. It's again just the um, visual for the mesh. So now I can take the anim bone and move the gun around however I see fit. Okay. Obviously, it's still very large. So we're looking at something more like around that. Let's go to local here so that everything's kind of lining up. And it, it, sh it should be roughly around there. Okay. And the other thing I want to do is just go to the top view here really quick. And I'm just going to eyeball this. I know I should be... Um, matching it, but I'm just going to eyeball it because I really kind of don't care at this point. It's not that important but for me, but it would be for you guys, so don't don't, you know, be a little bit more careful there. Try to get the, the positions and everything like as exacting as you can. So yeah, I'm thinking right there ain't bad in his hand. That's fine for now for our purposes. Again, we're just doing this for um, delete all that now. We're just doing it for uh, the sake of um, the video. So I want to actually, because I don't, like I said, I don't want to go too crazy with it. I don't really want this thing hanging around. Uh, I'm just going to delete it from the mesh um, just because. Let's uh, collapse to that guy. And then what I can do is take this piece, actually all of these pieces, and just delete them. And then we go back to the skin modifier. Okay, so that piece is gone, and let's go ahead and get rid of that bone as well for the reloader, for the speed loader item. Okay, so there it is in his hands, but it's not going to export correctly at all um, because of an issue. So I need to, before I go any further here, I want to save myself here because I don't want to have anything screw up. So let's see, we'll call this guy, Hanum guy, and we'll call this... Uh, pistol and I'll just call this setup for now okay and what I want to do is I want to go control page down and I want to get the mesh and then I'm just gonna isolate this okay because I need to do some work on it so the first things first if I want to export this mesh so that it does stick in his hand I want to um, let's see view and then just go to the rotate tool make sure that's on view I just want to zero everything out really quick and then rotation like so, okay. So you can see. Remember when I turned, I flipped the gun all the way around in his hand. You can see that originally I had it pointing 
positive x and now it's negative x. I had to do negative x so that it would align with the um, with the UE4 guy. It still will, remember, this is aligned and everything's positioned based on this and that's what's important. So what I need to actually do here is um, two things. One, I gotta reset the scales on stuff because if I look at the scale here, I'm at 1.43 and the other thing I gotta do is um, make sure that that doesn't that doesn't get translated through everything so actually the first thing that I'm gonna do which is gonna be slightly a pain in the ass is just because I don't want to worry about it I'm gonna unlink everything okay and then what I'm gonna do is come here and just hit reset scale uh, let me uh, let me get that off I think it's still gonna grow huge Yes, okay, let's undo that. All right, so what I need to do is when this stuff gets reset to the scale, the mesh has been scaled down by the bones, so the skin modifier is taking that into account. So we need to negate that, and what we have to do is actually reapply the skin modifier. So, um, where where is this? Is this where? Yeah, yeah this is fine. Okay, so I'll just call this uh, Python skin weights. Okay, and then what I want to do is I want to collapse two, and then I want to take this guy and I also want to reset the scale just in case. I know it was 100% here, but I just want to do it just in case. Okay, so now I should, I think, be able to take everything and reset the scale, and we don't get a problem. And now we look 100%, 100%, it's important. So. I'm just going to hide this for a second because now I need to go back in and I need to <laughs> reset this hierarchy, which, yes, the answer is yes. Pain in the ass. Um, especially when max three, four, five, and six. Okay, and then we want <coughs> all of these guys to this. Okay, I want uh, this guy to this, this guy to this, this guy to this. I know, I know I'm not naming them out or calling them out or anything like that, but um, everything is basically going to this anim bone, uh, except for, let's see, that is this, so that should go to here. Okay, so I'm gonna unhide all really quick, and let's just take a look. We should see all the bones f spinning there. Let's make sure it's local though. Okay, that's not bad. This should take all of that with it. That does. The anim bone should take everything but the root, which it does not. It's missing this guy. So let's go control page down this. Let's go ahead and re-isolate. Oops. Oh, nothing's linked to that guy. Let's take this guy, control page down, including that and that. And now we'll isolate that uh, because the hammer mm, missed the hammer, right? What did I miss? Anything else? Yeah, I missed this guy. OK. That's that uh, little piece you got to pull back to unlock the gun to be able to, you know, reload it. So, and then this guy goes here. So now this should control everything, just perfect. And this should control everything above that, which is good. Um, this uh, thing here should work like that to spin all those pieces, which it does. This should pull all those out, which it does. And these are kind of separate anyway, but they should just all follow this and the trigger goes with it as well. So let's on isolate. And now what I want to do is take this control page down, including this, and then just isolate again. Okay. And now what I can do is throw back on the skin modifier, uh, add some bones. And as long as select children is on, we can just click this and hit select. Okay. Now we can just reload our skin weight, Python skin weights. Boom and match by name always and just make sure there's up oh, there's a blank incoming envelopes 
They are lined up. Let's see what happens. Just fine. Ah, uh oh. That is a piece of this. Okay, so I need to edit the skin weights really quick. And I believe it is cylinder arm, yes. And as you can see, some of these are not being picked up. So what I want to do is I want to go by verts, and I want the element, and I just want to get that whole thing. And we want to set that to one. And then we can, if we're curious, we can go through and we can say, hey, you know, is the bullet release working fine? Is the cylinder good? You know, you can just take a look if there's any uh, blends to it or anything like that. Because, you know, for the, this is a mechanical piece, so usually in a mechanical piece there's no bending pieces, which means that uh, each element should, in fact, be 100% to the bone. But, again, that's not going to be entirely the case, if you're, especially if you're working on a sci-fi weapon or something. Okay. So I think that did it. Yes. Let's spin this guy around. Yes. We're still we're back to get. Okay. So we now have a decent export scene. So we still have pistol set up. So let's save that and let's just go ahead and export this and let's go recent places. I should have an exports. What folder am I in? That's fine. Okay, so we're just going to call this cult python and we'll call this 3p sk mesh because what we're doing is we're saying, hey, you know, this is our, um, you know, this is our three player mesh. I'm just going to bring it in. And I'd call it, you know, I, I usually do a one player and a three player mesh. And for the most part, a three player mesh should be uh, like an, <coughs> excuse me, like an LOD of the first person mesh. Uh, like the first person mesh can be like 25, 35, 40,000 polygons to be really, really nice looking in your hand. But uh, from a distance and when you see it in other people's hands, you really don't need that kind of detail. You know, nobody's going to care enough. Maybe somebody would go up and go, wow, that looks really good. But you're only going to get like one person that does that, and it's not going to help the game, um, you know. So unless you know your game's all about how everything looks. So with that done, we should now be able to unisolate, and I should be able to realign it to his hand. Okie dokie, and you can see it's pretty good in his hands. And now I can just. fix this stuff. Now, here's the thing. The left hand's still hooked, right? So we don't want that anymore. So we need to come to the Motion tab and just delete the link constraint, which automatically detaches it, okay? Uh, the other thing we want to have happen is take this guy, and we're going to use the link constraint, Control shift l and we are going to just link it to his hand like so. Okay, and now once again, just like the rifle, we have the ability to do this. And we know that this is how he needs to be facing, right? We Because we saw that in the other one. So we can take this now, move it back, and rotate it. Pull the... Uh, elbow in, give him a little bit more of a heroic stance, pulling his arm back just a little bit. Only heroes keep their arms behind their hips while they stand there. And maybe a little bit out like so. That's probably all right there. So I'm going to save as again, and this is going to be Anim. UE4 guy, pistol, idle. Save. Okay. So he holds the gun like this. Um, which, you know, I got, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not really doing a, a whole ton of work on this. Uh, I also do not need this bone to be spun like that anymore. 
because he doesn't um, he's not trying to line up his shoulder actually I screwed that up undo 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 before I make that adjustment I like to turn off the uh, inherit of the rotate while I'm making this adjustment just because um, I don't want to have to redo the head especially considering that the head is actually at a weird ass angle right okay he's making a fist let's go ahead and relax that I'm going to be on each pivot. So just give him a little bit more of a natural hand position here. Nothing crazy that I'm doing. Just rotating, just posing. Doesn't feel too bad. Probably pull it a little bit closer to his body. Let's see, what kind of animations do we have going on? Okay, we still have breathing. And remember, the animation for the pistol was done through this bone, so that animation is still here too. So that's probably going to be alright for the idle. Shooting and aiming and reloading and equipping and all that stuff there's a lot of animations you know we kind of do need but in this case you know we're, we're we're trying to keep it simple right for the for the purpose of just trying to learn everything so let's go ahead and save and let's pick up an export here and this will be UE4 pistol idle okay and save and okie doke so now we have the um, we have this and okay this is what I'm gonna do when you run with the pistol I'm kinda thinking that I'm just gonna use the original run animation uh, because it actually kind of makes sense that you, if you're running with it, if you have something in your hand and you're running, you're still just kind of running. It depends on how heavy the object is. If it's really heavy, obviously it, it drags your arm down. But if it's, you know, if you're holding like a candy bar or something and you you walk or run, you don't really have, doesn't really affect how you move so much, uh, depending on how big it is. But I'm not sure about that. I kind I kind of feel like I'm cheesing you guys if I do that. So actually I don't want to make any adjustments after I export it let's just go ahead and save and I think I'm gonna call it there for this video so we've prepped it up and again you know I didn't model a pistol but you know you guys can always either go download one or or something like that you know or you know make your own I, if you really want to see a tutorial on modeling that kind of thing uh, I have a playlist from way back when I first started the channel uh, where I'm modeling a Glock and it's a 12 part series we were actually gonna I was gonna sell that tutorial for like you know 10 or 20 bucks or something you know in, in like a video series and people would have to buy it but we just came out with it free and then said hey if you if you help us by donating uh, you know you get the source but um, as the programmer for the project was handling all of that so I don't really know what happened to any of that so I think we're good there, yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and end the part, so um, Sitpaw signing off, thanks for watching, uh, again, we're set up, we do have a simple animation, we have the mesh ready, uh, both of them are exported, so we're going to get into UE4, and uh, we'll see what's going on, I may start the next video with a run animation, uh, just to see what happens, but again, the, the difficult part is that we can't bring their animations in because of what it does to the bones and the mesh, nothing gets retargeted, if we do that, and then we export, we are double screwing ourselves, if that makes any sense. Um, because now we're trying to retarget from a retargeted animated skeleton, and there's a lot more involved in doing that, according to them, even. So they're like, you know, a one way um, 
a one-way retargeting is fine, but a two-way retargeting, which is what I think what we're looking at, is much different. And to be honest with you, at this point in my life, I don't know what to do about it. Uh, I really don't. So if I do come up with a solution eventually, I'll, I'll let you guys know. But anyways, hit pause sign off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one where we start setting this guy up in the editor.